Good morning, this is Pastor Will. I hope you're three. If you're watching this, you're probably in your pajamas, have a dog on your lap. Uh, hopefully you're at home, safe and hungered down. Obviously, we're not meeting together because everything is crazy right now. Normally, at this time, we would be worshiping together in a room together, singing songs together, reading scripture together, hearing a message together. And now we're in the middle of this, this crazy time where we're loving one another by staying apart. But just because we're not together in person doesn't mean we aren't gathered as the church. And so I'm so thankful that you are joining us this morning as we sing songs, maybe not physically together, but gather. So that being said, we're going to do something a little different today. It'll be a, a different kind of a service. And uh, we'll do some different songs that maybe you haven't heard of and some that you do know. Uh, this one is all right from Psalm 23. And it's just a good reminder that we still have a good God and a trusted Savior that takes care of us even in the midst of uncertainty. Welcome again today as we gather. Uh, one reminder, if you will uh, direct yourself to our website for any updates, that's where we're updating most. We're trying to get email updates out, obviously, hlcbonita.org as to our schedule. But as we begin our worship today, we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The God of heaven has made his home on earth. Christ dwells among us and is one of us. The highest of all creation lives among the least. Christ journeys with rejected and welcomes the weary. Come now, all who thirst, and drink the water of life. Come now, all who hunger, and be filled with good things. Come now, all who seek, and be warmed by the fire of Come, Lord, come to us. Enter our darkness with your light. 
fill our emptiness with your presence. Come refresh, restore, renew us. In our sadness comes joy, in our troubles comes peace. In our fearfulness come as hope, in our darkness come as light, in our frailty come as strength, in our loneliness come as love. Come refresh, restore, renew us. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we have two readings for you this morning. The first one is from Paul's second letter to Timothy. It's in chapter 3, beginning in verse 14. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those who have learned it, and how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is God breathed, and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing in his kingdom, I give you this charge. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths, but you, Keep your head in all situations, endure hardship, do the work of an evangelist, discharge all the duties of your ministry. Here ends the reading. Our second reading today is from John chapter 8, beginning in verse 31. To the Jews who have believed him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? Jesus replied, Very truly, I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou 
As we begin our message, let's begin with a prayer. We pray, gracious God, creator of all things, we thank you for the reminder that you are in, in charge and in control, which we get each day in so many different and varied ways. Oh Lord, I pray that wherever we gather and worship this week, and wherever the flock of believers at Hope Lutheran Church comes together, that you would bless us, Lord, that you would work your word through and in us, that you would use me to proclaim your message to your great glory and in Jesus' name. And so we pray all of these things in the name of him who is our Savior, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Today is the fifth Sunday in the season of Lent. Lent, which begins on Ash Wednesday, is a 40-day period leading up to Easter. Now, if you're at home and you pulled out a calendar and you're counting your days while you're, you're listening or, or watching, I want you to know that you won't come up to 40 days if you don't leave off the Sundays. And uh, the Sundays don't count, and the reason for that is because the Sundays in uh, the season of Lent are meant still as a celebration of Easter because Sunday is always a celebration of Easter. Lent's a time to reflect on the meaning and the significance, well, of Jesus' death and his resurrection. So many people observe Lent by giving up things. They give up things that are maybe overly important in their life, their love of chocolate, or alcohol, or you name it. This giving up is meant to be a reminder, again, of Jesus Christ. Recently, if you've been watching the news, which I'm sure you have been, it's become impossible to read or watch anything without hearing the words coronavirus. A pastor friend commented that because of the coronavirus, we are in a weird sort of Lenten time, a time when the things we've taken for granted, maybe, well, we've had to give up. Things like gathering in, in church, for example, gathering with friends or, or shopping, an anecdotal story I had to run to the store to pick something up, and they were doing cur curbside pickup. So I had to order it online, and I had a slip that they were supposed to scan when I arrived there, show my ID, and they would touch neither the slip that I had printed nor my ID. We're, many of us, forced to stay at home much of the time and in isolation. And in fact, I've heard a story about a, a woman who she was at home in isolation and she noted that there was a, a strange man that had somehow been in her house and wandering around and so he seemed like he was out of place and acting peculiar and it took her a, a few minutes to realize that it was her husband who was in isolation with her and he just didn't know what to do with himself. The interesting thing for us is that when we observe Lent, we know that Good Friday is coming, and we know that, well, Easter Sunday are coming. But one of the difficult times at this point that we're at right now is we can't see the end of the story. We don't know when or if there would be a Good Friday or an Easter moment that is coming. But what truly makes this crisis so hard is that we have a tendency to think that we have or know all of the answers and that we know the truth of the world. Well, this has been a wake-up moment for many of us who thought that way, where we realize that we are not the source of all the answers, nor are we the source of the truth. In our reading for our message today, which is from John 8, 
we see that the people who gathered around Jesus thought they knew the truth too. So in our gospel reading, we see that Jesus was speaking to these well, large crowds of people. People were hanging on his every word, wanting to hear more. And so Jesus began to talk about freedom. He told them about the truth that brings them real and lasting freedom. It was at this point that some who were listening began to question what Jesus was saying. They responded to him by saying, already free, we know the truth. Now the reality was they weren't especially free. The Romans occupied Israel at that time, making them captives in their own country. But Jesus was talking about, well, a different sort of captivity. He was talking about captivity to sin. I want to share with you again from verse 34. It says very literally this, Truly, truly, I say to you, that everyone who sins is a slave to sin. No, I didn't repeat the word truly twice accidentally. It shows up, although if your translation doesn't show it that way, not all do. The literal word used there is the word Amen. So Jesus is saying Amen, Amen. I say to you that everyone who sins is a slave to sin. This got me thinking and it made me wonder at a question that I want you to think about today. The question is this, do you feel free? Now, I live in Lee County and the other day I received an alert on my cell phone telling me to stay home. And I have to say at that moment I didn't feel especially free. When it comes to what Jesus says about us being captive to sin, our actions prove just how right Jesus is. I mean, we talk a great deal about being free. And like the Israelites, we may even feel free. But the things we say and do, well, they speak a different message. We're captives to sin. We can't know true freedom on our own. But the good news that I want you to remember today and this week is that Jesus provides us real, lasting truth and freedom. One of the most powerful verses in our reading today comes in verse 32. Jesus says, then you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. As we hear those words, one of the things to remember that Jesus himself is the truth. He is the source, the one who makes us free. Jesus announces to us that, well, through the cross, we are free from sin, free from slavery, free from the law, free from injustice, free from debt, free from tyranny, free from death. The freedom is ours in a very real way today, right now, through Jesus, the gift of forgiveness through the cross. And yet we know we'll experience it even more fully when Jesus returns again. My prayer for you today is that the Lord would bless you in the truth and in the freedom that he brings to you through the cross. Let's pray. Merciful, gracious God, giver of life, creator of all things, again we thank you for the freedom that you give us, the freedom, the truth, and the freedom and truth of Jesus Christ himself. Bless and keep us in this good news, remind us that in all things you are in charge. Lord, I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. One of the things we do as we gather, as we profess our faith, and we do so um, often either using the Apostles' Creed or the Nicene Creed. And so today we do that 
with the words of the Apostles' Creed. The service you can print along, there should be a link on the site. Um, but uh, I will read it and, and you can join in as you'd like at home. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Thank you for joining us in this really unique and new way of worshiping together. Before we close, before we sing another song, before we um, pray together one more time, let's just let's close in prayer. Father, in the midst of this wilderness, in the midst of this, this Lenten journey, what a reminder you have given us of what it means to have to rely on you totally. God, as we learn what it looks like to try to love each other by staying put as we learn what it looks like to adjust this new normal. We, we lift all of our concerns in your hands. Lord, we want to pray for those right now that have been diagnosed and tested positive for COVID-19. We pray for a quick recovery. We pray for those that have been in contact with those that have been infected. Lord, that you will, you will keep them safe. Lord, keep them healthy. For all of our government leaders, our mayors, our governors, our senators, our congresspersons, our presidents, Lord, we pray that you just give wisdom, discernment, clarity to move forward in a way that not only glorifies you, Lord, but keeps, keeps everyone safe. Lord, for those that are feeling alone as they stay at home, I pray for comfort and for peace. For those that are feeling afraid, Lord, that you remind them that you are the good shepherd, that it is only green pastures you make us lay down. Lord, I pray that you remind us that doing the work of church in this sort of strange capacity, you remind us of what you shared through Paul with Timothy, that though things look different, the work is still there to be done. So help us be faithful, proclaiming your word, and caring for others. All of these things, we pray in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.